Welcome to the Leaf Man Podcast. <laughs> Did a little early. I shot we, are back. Back. I we are back. <laughs> we are getting back. We're here. We're here. This is the Leaf Man Podcast. <laughs> I'm your host, Trevor Taylor. This is my co-host. Brooks McCorder. And today, we're going to talk to you about a bunch of questions that Brooks has come up with because I have very little. All two of them. All two questions. I feel like we can talk on them oh, yeah, for, for sure. a minute. Um, we'll have insight on both of them. Uh, so let's start off with the one I kind of talked about this morning when we were at the gym. Yeah. Because it's the more real one, and then we'll spruce it up with some fun stuff cool. later. So I kind of just wanted to discuss like going through the doom and gloom of this season. You know what I mean? It yeah. happens and it, it happens in summer sometimes too. I, it's, yeah. I feel like it's just a mood that settles over a lot of new businesses or yeah. any business. I re really, you know what I mean? Just where people are pissed off. Everyone's sad. Money's not coming in or money is coming in and it's overwhelming. Yep. Stuff like that. So I kind of just like the reality of the doom and gloom, like how heavy can it seem? How do you stay positive through it? If that's even possible, mm -hmm. or are you just making it through to when you can be positive again? Yeah. Or, and, oh, and then how do you maintain team standards when Ooh. morale is low? It's a good one. Because you're always going to be excited about your business and your standards. Yeah. Of course, uh, you, you can withhold your standards. It's can you get other people to do it yeah. when morale is low and people don't give a shit? Yeah. Well, let's break it down. Let's break it down. Yeah, we can go with just like kind of the reality of that doom and gloom feel you know what i mean you know yeah. what i'm talking about that yeah. that gen general just you wake up and you're like oh no <laughs> rain them in coach yeah rain them in what was that remember the titans yeah yeah doc. um yeah doc <laughs> um the doom and gloom dude i I'm, I'm still learning that to be honest um it's a big I, lesson it takes yeah. a long time to learn i i am very good i feel like a car compartmentalizing mm -hmm. i think now um i wasn't always that way so most of the time i can still put on my it's time to get to work face and go do the stuff that i need to do and the boys don't see me upset or fret or mad or stressed or frustrated some of them will catch glimpses occasionally like matt for we'll, sure we'll be like hey are you pretty stressed or or like you like back Any, in the day you anyone know that's it. not me really like 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 i feel like even the other day in the gym I can tell just because, like, if I walk into the gym and you didn't say anything to me in, like, 18 seconds, I'm like, he's, he's probably upset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, yeah. but, like, not a lot of people have that kind of access or, yeah. you know, feel of, exactly. of you. Yeah, I think, I think because I, I react different to different people, if I don't do something that is ordinary for them, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, Trevor must be upset. Even though I'm not acting upset or, like, acting right. mad or frustrated at them, I just didn't do something that they recognize as, like, yeah. oh, yeah, Trevor's not, like, must be in a bad mood. And you're very good at recognizing those things, so you can tell. But most people, I feel like, wouldn't ever know. I, 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 I don't think so either. Yeah, if I was like mad or upset, and the way that I do that is, um, I know so, that I don't have a choice really. Like if if I fail at that, then the it just it's a domino effect. Then Matt gets frustrated. Right. Then, not only is morale already low, but now they know your morale is low. Therefore, their falls theirs lower. is lower. Yeah. Then Matt's is lower. Then Withers is lower. Then Ryan's lower. They just like. Trickles and trickles down, exactly. just just down the pipeline. So I know that I don't really have a choice. It's finding a balance between that and the doom and gloom. It's it's. I feel like it's a balance between finding that, but not overdoing it. Because I also feel like lower level employees are not lower level employees, but just like employees in general, myself included, also hate the. I know stuff is really messed up right now. Why are you being so overtly like? No, it's okay, guys. We got it. Let's just yeah. Let's get to going. Yeah. I am too blessed to be stressed. Yeah, you, you have know to what be, I mean. You have to be yeah. accurate with it. Like, yeah. and I tell the boys like, hey, we're going through a hard time right now. Like, shut up. This is a difficult time. It's hard for everybody, and you know that, yeah. and they know that because they know that we haven't done a job in like three days. So they're not stupid. Exactly. Like they're like, hell yeah, Trevor's probably hurting financially and stressed. Yeah, like yeah. it's like the don't fluff my nuts, but yeah. like you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But but how can I help? Or? But yeah, but I don't let them. It's okay to look beaten up. It's never okay to look defeated. Mm -hmm. Like you can't look like you gave up. You can look like you're getting your crap kicked in for sure, day in and day out. But you can never look like you're ready to throw in the towel. And that's that's kind of how I how I ride it. I'm like, yeah, guys, look, I'm stressed today. Like I have a lot on my plate going on. But just so you know, like here are the things I'm doing to fix the problems. So they know that I'm not like, oh yeah, life sucks. Hopefully this fixes itself. Cause like yeah. 
what kind of morale is that going to bring to the table? Yeah, and it, and it does nothing for morale to be like, I mean, sometimes the reality is like, well, nothing. just wait two months. Yeah, there's nothing I can do. Nothing, right now. nothing I can do right now. But, I mean, you do, like I said, you have to find a balance between like, nothing I can do and we are just doing fine. Like, don't yeah. you worry your little head. Yeah, exactly. There's a fine balance in there. And I think the balance is mm. honesty, but also protection. And, so being honest with them, like, you don't, you don't need to go into all the details. And like, reassurance. Yeah, reassurance. Like, honest, this is a hard time. Yeah. That's honest. But I don't want to say, this is a hard time. I don't have payroll for you this week. Yeah. Like, it's, this is a hard time. And then you, I will figure that out. That's your stress to carry. I will figure that out. And then you just tell them, this is a hard time, but we're going to be okay. And then you figure it out in the meantime on your right. own. Yeah, we are, we are getting beat up right now, but my spirit is nowhere near broken. Yeah. We're getting beat up right now. We're, Not even close. We're, this is the rocky scene where we're in the corner taking the punches and we're going to come out swinging when it's the right time. But now yeah. it's not the right time, so we just have to sit here and take our beating. Yeah. And that's that's kind of how I, I I work it with them. And do our best with what we're given. Exactly. Yeah. So that that's how I, that's how I manage the doom and gloom. And then I do things like I, I'm a firm believer that taking care of your mental and physical health uh, is very important. So when things are hard... I lean into the things that I know make me a better person. So I lean into the gym. I lean into my walks. I lean into reading my books. I lean into, you know, some educational classes. I lean into my wife. I lean into my church. Like I lean into the things that I know I can't fix this at work right now. So what can I do? I can lean into the things that I know make me a strong human. And that's how I ride out the wave. Yeah. And it, and that's what it is for you. And I think that for me, it's kind of along the same lines. It's like you get I do like I do feel better when I'm in my routine and leaning into it and stuff like that. But it doesn't always have to be something that's so like it doesn't have to be perfect. I feel like yeah. I'm like video games aren't great for you, but it I have felt a million times better sometimes if like we were having a bad day or whatever. I was pissed off about this, that, and the third. Yep. But then I'm like, oh, there's no way this is gonna get better if I just keep trying to hit this yeah, nail. You need, you need I'm going to miss the nail if I keep swinging. Yeah. So let me take a break. Let me read. Let, me, let me rest my arm Play and I'll games. come back. Yeah, there, there are definitely times like, you know, <laughs> it's just the generic, it's the generic um, social media entrepreneur. Uh, it's the generic social media entrepreneur thing to say like, oh yeah, you just go work out more and do this and do that. And that's not like, honestly, that is helpful. Like you still have to do those things. But there are days when I would just come home so broken from like work and stress and everything. I just would watch a movie or play a game for an hour with Erica because like I needed a break mentally from the stress load that I was carrying. Yeah. And unfortunately, like nothing else is going to give that to you. Like I love the gym and I love going on my walks. But even those two things, my mind is still going the whole time. Yeah. And you're thinking about. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Like I'm thinking about those things. Sometimes your mind needs a break. And unfortunately, like the only thing that can give your mind a break is mental stimulation. And walking is not going to give me mental stimulation. You know? Right, right. Like, I, mean, I mean, the walks help in the way that like you're not actively working on it and you have time to think about. And yes. sometimes solutions come in those times. Yes, exactly. But sometimes. That's why you need while, a While you're not both. sitting in front of the computer like. Yes, yes. Y- you know. It's like, it's like the walk is a good time because you can come up with problems, solu- solutions to problems during the walk. But you're and, not taking a break from the issue. But you're not taking a break from the issue. No. And sometimes yeah. like you need the break from the whole issue to just like reset because your brain is fried from thinking about it over and over and over and over, over again. Yeah, I agree. You know, so like I agree with you. There, there's like a good balance there. Like I, I think any entrepreneur who says that they don't take breaks and watch Netflix is full of it. Right. Honestly, I really believe that. Right. If you don't take time to decompress and and you're going to say and tell me, oh, my decompressing is, is working on my side business. <laughs> right. No, it's not. Right. You're lying. Dude. Exactly. Like, I need this. I, I need this thing that's, you know, I, I love sitting down and watching TV end of the night. Love it. Yeah. I, I do it with Erica. 100%. D- does really nothing for me except fully reset and it let me escape. Cool. And also, also, when people are like, oh, yeah, I just work from dawn till dusk and then I get in bed and I go to sleep. And I'm like, cool, Sounds man. terrible. That's pretty selfish of you because you promised a life to your partner and she probably wants to spend some time with you, even if it's just cuddling for a few minutes watching TV or cuddling for a few minutes while reading. Like, if you're working dawn to dusk. I work dawn to dusk. My wife might as well be my secretary. <laughs> yeah, like, I just disagree with cool. that, you know? like, Good And also, you're a piss poor manager of time, dude. I can get so much done with my time in the day. Like I don't need 16 hours a day and then eight hours of sleep. Like 
If then you need, manage your time better. If you need 16 hours a day to do what you need to do in your business, hire somebody. Yeah, hire somebody. <laughs> like, or be better at time management. Like maybe you're not utilizing those hours as well as you think you are. Maybe you're spending eight hours at work, but you're not actually working for a full eight hours because you could probably do all that stuff in three if you actually focused on the task at hand. Right. Which I do. That's why my time, that's why I need the breaks because my time is not like, oh yeah, I was kind of at work. I was kind of doing estimates. Like, no, dude. Those time blocks are allotted for what I'm doing and I do it full force until it's done. And then I'm done with it. And I don't want to think about it anymore. But sometimes when business is sucking, that hour time horizon takes further and further and further out. And that's when I need like more, like the breaks because I'm just fried. Yeah. I mean, there's, it's life's about balance. You can't yeah. just go, go, go. Like no one has endless energy. Yeah. And, and it will be out of balance burnout, sometimes. Burnout is will, will, is, will, and always be. Yes, I think. A problem. Yeah. And, and, and. I, no one's immune to it. Yeah, but there's also there's there's balance to balance. There's also like uh there is there is put that shit on a fortune cookie. Yeah, for real. So you, dude. Balance, you will find balance in balance. Yeah, you, there is balance <laughs> to your balance. But the truth is, some people take balance to the extreme. They're like, oh yeah, I have to figure out this stuff every day, and like I'm very well balanced, and this, that, and the other. And it's like sometimes you have to be out of balance. Like sometimes my business requires a lot of me, and mm -hmm. I don't have as much time to spend with my wife as I would like. But then when my business is good because I figured out the problem that was causing me stress, I spend more time with my wife. Yeah. So it's like not all as easy as a day-to-day -day thing. I think about it in quarters and years. Like my balance is gonna be sucky sauce during the summer and fall because that's when my business is a business. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I play it correctly this year that way and when winter comes, my finances are in order next year and I won't be as stressed. So when yeah. winter is slow, I can enjoy it. Or at least it, or at least every winter, hope it gets a little bit easier through the efforts that you did the previous year. Yes, because last one, because last winter was just brutal. Because like, and if, I'll never. If you're, if, I mean, if you're being honest, could you survive another winter like that? Probably not. Probably not. Probably right. Not. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll That's never, a tough thing to say. Yeah, I, I will never do that again. It's yeah. I'll tough never, thing to say, but it's if it's true, it's true. Yeah. Well, that's why I put perimeters on my. I restructured like my whole business. You know, for those of you listening, like. I've, I've had multiple people, I'm actually surprised how many people listen to the podcast because I've had multiple people reach out and be like, hey, notice you haven't put up any new episodes. What's going on? Oh, really? That's <laughs> yeah. funny. Yeah, it's happened like, you know, when I say multiple people, like three or four, <laughs> you know, that's but a that's ton. a lot to me. There's more people that are saying it to me. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, I was like, you know, I've told them like, oh, we had to take, you know, a little break. But what, you know, we kind of talked about in the last podcast is yeah. that break was due to like, I didn't play my cards right last year and winter came and I wasn't prepared for it and it hurt me financially. It yeah. hurt me mentally. It hurt a lot. It sucked. Right. And I will never, like you said, will I go through that again? No, I won't. And that's because during that time, I didn't just sit by and like sit on my hands and be like, this sucks. Like I restructured our entire system, got rid of every single bit of overhead, replanned an entire year on that board right there that these people can't see. So that I know how to avoid this for the next year because right. I will never do that again. Yeah, and <laughs> and the thing is, is all that work, like you weren't just sitting on your hands, all that work that you were putting in, thought this, setting perimeters, reorganizing with the knowledge that it's not gonna do anything for you in the moment. Nothing. It can only help you next year. Exactly, 100%. That, that's in no way does like, like in no way does figuring that out be like, fine, I gotta put perimeters on this. Got it, Now I have the now I have the plan does nothing for you at for at least three to four months. Exactly, 100%. And there are things you can do in the meantime, which I did, you know, like I read Hormozy's book and started making marketing videos. But yeah, th that plan, it's it's that, um, it's that um, if you can, Hormozy says it really good. Um, he says, like, if you can withgo the reward for a short amount of time, you'll get a bigger reward. If you can withgo it for a longer period of time, bigger reward. And so it just gets, you know, the longer you can go without the reward, the bigger the reward ends up being. And right. that's what it is. Like there is no reward for that. But I made the plan and now I have to implement it and it will take several months, probably a year. But by this time next year, hopefully, because I sat on it, did the right things, the, all, all those things will come to fruition and I will not be put in a place that I was already What put. is waiting? So, so the longer you wait, the bigger the reward. Yeah. To you, what is the consequence, if any, of waiting too long. Is there waiting too long? Can you wait too long? Yeah, yeah, it's a great question actually. Um, yeah, because, because. Because that's I, a great thing to say, like the longer you wait, the better the reward, but there's, a, there's gotta yeah. be a perimeter on but that. But it depends on what you're doing, right? I, I think the longer you wait with action implemented, the bigger the reward. 
So if you're like, oh, I'm waiting to start my business till the right time, that's not the same. That's that's or I'm waiting to I'm waiting to grow. You're I you have three employees, you know, you cut back to this and that. Yeah. And the third. And going forward, I I'm just gonna wait. Cause I gotta wait. Yeah. Cause last time I tried to grow, freaked me out. So yeah. can you wait too, too long to too grow? Long. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The 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 thing is you have to implement action behind the waiting to get the reward thing. So like I'm waiting to grow again, but I'm con consistently putting in action steps. So mm -hmm. when I have got this amount of savings, when I have this much debt paid off, when I have these things, then I'll know it's time to grow again because I tried growing before I had those things and it hurt me. Right. So like that's why you can still wait and get the big reward in the long run, but you still have to be making the steps forward in the meantime. It's not like, oh, Oh, I'm waiting for the economy to be right. You can't wait for external. That's a good way to put it. You can't wait for external circumstances mm -hmm. to be Fair right yeah, for you. Sense. You know, but if you're kind of what I was looking yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably the best way I can put it. That's the way I would put it. Yeah, um, it makes sense. Speaking of, how's your? You want to talk about your hot sauce stuff? Yeah, I mean, I'm not doing it anytime soon, but I am starting a hot sauce or not a hot sauce LLC, more of a sauce LLC, just with sauce? spice. Okay. You know what I mean? Because like, I was just talking about David about it earlier before you came in, but like, you know. There's hot sauces out there, but it's some of them just like it's like oh this one's such a good hot sauce. It just hurts. Like, it just there's hurts. no flavor. Yeah. So like that's why I dialed back to like uh, sauces and whatnot. But I'm gonna be doing them locally. I'm gonna try and set so myself you up did, like, to be in farmers markets and stuff this year. Maybe next. Yeah, you came up with a good name, right? Didn't you? Yeah. Uh, the the name as it stands right now is uh, Stay Deadly Sasco. Stay Deadly Sasco. So you could do like honestly, like I was thinking about because I never even thought about it until you said it. Um, Instead of doing hot sauces, it could just be like a sauce company because you could make like when we were in um, when we went on that cruise to yeah. the Dominican Republic, they had like a mango sauce and it wasn't like it had a little spice, but it was like mango. Right now, that's that's the goal. Yeah, we're going to have was, mild. We're going to like super mild all the way to like, you know, hot. Yeah, if I wouldn't we, even call it a hot sauce, though. It was just like it would have been good on anything that I ate. And that's why I changed it to more of a sauce co rather than yeah. sauce company rather than that's cool. Hot sauce. Because you can um, even make like custom ranch too. Yeah, I mean that's a sauce. I mean, Sarah just made one. It's barely got a little bit of bite, little bit of sauce, little bit of spice. But um, I mean, she made one called you know it's better in forward, so it's called yeah. night night vision. I like it because it's like neon orange. Um, oh, that's cool. It's not or not neon orange. It's like neon green, but it and it's not a ton of spice. But man, it's just a real good green sauce, perfect on tacos. It's so good. Um, I'm like making, I'm, I'm actually fermenting some strawberry, ki strawberry and kiwis right now with mm -hmm. some red jalapenos Sounds fun. and I'm going to do a strawberry kiwi lime, uh, hot, uh, sauce. That sounds way good. It'll be, it'll be good. Um, I'm excited, but it's, it's really just going to be an experiment as of right now. It's really just going to be, I'm in the stage of, I'm going to make a ton. I'm going to give most of it away. See if to just to get, see if people like it. I want people to keep trying. Are you going to make jams and jellies? Dial it down. Maybe eventually. Not now. Yeah, I'm not really interested. I don't really use it that much. Yeah, um, and it's a lot of sugar, you yeah. know. Um, but you know, if anything, it just becomes a family hobby. I mean, it's yeah. I don't need extra money. We yeah. have money. Yeah, we're we're comfortable. I mean, if it blows up and eventually we want to do something with it, then we will. But as of right now, you know, it just sounds fun coming up with these things, getting together with friends, selling it locally. Um, farmer, put the baby in the stroller, take him down to the farmers market, sell a few bottles. I'm honestly just thinking about because every you know we're gonna do the veteran charity thing as always. Yeah. Um, honestly, I'm thinking about just starting at like, hey, um, all the money that I get make off of this either gets used to buy more material just yeah. for the next batch. The rest of it just goes to charity. That's cool. I don't need the money, and I mean yeah. I don't need to make a crazy profit. Like That'd be I, fun. I want to make enough money to buy more hot sauce bottles, yeah. which is really all you need. Yeah. More bottles, more ingredients, and then the rest can go to Special Operations Warriors Foundation. They can go to Green Beret, the Green Beret Foundation. Yeah. All of that stuff like that. And that's really what I want to do it for. So if I'm doing it for that, if we're doing it for the right reasons, I feel like if it's meant to be, it'll blow up because yeah. we're I'm doing it because I want to one, give back to the veteran community, and two, you know, just come up with some sauces and come what may. Come, come up with some sauce. Come with me. So I'll have some at the baby thing on Saturday. I'll let you try Sweet. some. Um, but yeah, it'll be good, man. It's going to be fun. That's dope. It's going to be a slow burn, uh, no pun intended, but <laughs> but I'm looking forward to it. That's awesome, dude. That's going to be way fun. It'll be a good time. Um, so going back to what we were talking about, um, before we move on to the other thing, because I know we, we got a set amount of time, 
but um so with the doom and gloom how do you maintain standards when morale is low because oh, yeah. before you say what you're going to say know that you know it's it's obviously not always perfect yeah you know what i mean it's definitely not i've been in that situation i've been a private in the army when stuff sucks and you completely lose your will to do anything and your discipline and your routine falls off. Um, and that's going to happen for anyone that doesn't own this business with you yeah. because they're just working for you. Yeah. So how do you maintain one acknowledging to the people that they're faltering or, and how do you get them back on that standard? If, or do you readjust? Do you say, maybe I was different. Maybe we readjust the standard. What, yeah. What and I know that readjusting the standards not always the the option, but also don't be the social media influencer that says don't readjust standards are the standards. Yeah. Because that's not the truth either. No, it's not. So not to like put you in the hot seat, yeah, no, but like good. when when standards fall due to low morale, what would your advice be to the to the average like, Joe Buck out yeah. there? Yeah. Um. Couple of things. One, I think a lot of people set standards that they don't hold themselves, which is stupid. Um, and two, I I think people get too, are way too harsh about, way too unrealistic about setting a standard that's always held perfectly. Exactly. Um, so I, for, for example, a good example is the gym, right? We go to right. the gym every day before work for an hour, and it's paid for. We work, instead of working eight hours a day, we work seven hours a day. That first hour is paid for, included in their salary, to go to the gym and work out with right. me. Now, that only works if I go to the gym and hold that standard so that they know that I'm not messing around. Like, I'm not just paying you guys to do whatever. Like, I'm here doing it with you. And so a lot of business owners set standards like, oh, yeah, you guys ought to always do this. But then they don't even do it themselves, which right. is just incorrect. That's incorrect. You can't set standards that you're not willing to hold. So that's step one. Setting the standard for everyone that you are also capable of holding. Step two is when the standard is faltered or when it's, people are having trouble uh, keeping it, you need to have a serious talk with people and ask them why, as a leader, the standard is not being held. Hey, are you having trouble at home? Hey, are you not focused at work? Um, hey, are you phys is, physically tired? Is this not feeling as is, important to is you? Is this as not feeling as important? First, you find the reason. And then after you find the reason, you figure out how to fix that problem so that the standard can be held. Now, if there is no good valid reason, then you have a talk and say, hey, I really need you to hold the standard because this is not working right. and this is the expectation. And that's when if people continue to break it over and over and over again, that's when there's grounds for like more serious conversations and termination. But most of the time, if you're reasonable, <clears throat> you can figure out what's going on with them. Like I have guys who show up late to the gym or are tired or and are like need a day off. And I get that. And the answer is, dude, we moved 30,000 pounds of material yesterday and um, I needed a day. Cool. In the future, if you're tired, communicate that. tell me. Yeah, tell me. You can take the day off. Because the there's a huge more. difference between texting you and telling you hey i'm burnt out are you good with me taking being 30 minutes late to the gym tomorrow or taking the day off rather than just doing it 100 percent, 100 percent. and that's why when there is a problem you talk to them first reasonably don't just start screaming at people. right reasonably hey what's going on why did this happen and then they tell you and they're like okay future state i understand why you're worried about it just talk to me the night before if you need a break don't be afraid to tell me that's where we have candor as a boss and employee like you tell me you're too tired because you guys have been working in the field. That's great. Cool. Take a day. Take two. Whatever. That's okay. And any boss who's not that reasonable is just a bad boss, especially guys in blue collar work because yeah. it is hard on your body. And if you are unreasonable enough to not let people take breaks here and there, then your business is never going to work, yeah. in my opinion. In my yeah. opinion. And I understand that. And like, I mean, devil's advocate, not even devil's advocate. Yeah, hit feet me. To Devil's advocate, feet to the fire. I don't work at Trico anymore. All those guys know I love them. What about and you can and again I've seen this. Yeah. There are guys that are on time for your gym yeah. every day. Yeah. For 
the whenever I've ever no, I, ever noticed. Yeah. There are also people that are never there on the same at, at, on time. Yeah. Usually about 15 20 minutes late. Mm -hmm. Um how do you fix how, that? How do you, not not fix it? I mean, if they need that time, then yeah. I get that and you know, I'm out of the loop. I don't yeah. freaking know. Um but I'm just saying is that is that an issue that you have had to deal with yes. or plan to? Yes. And the answer to that is pretty simple. It's just a situational uh, no, kind, or, kind of, what's kind your of, answer? kind Sorry, of, I cut no, you no, you're good. Kind of, kind of, it's situational for sure. It's situational, right. but also the answer is the person who's there on time every day will rise faster than the person who's not. Exactly. And he'll I, get sure. promotions faster. He'll get more money. And, and that doesn't mean that the other guy is a bad guy. He's talked to me and said, Hey, I need breaks or I need more time. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. You know, like you take the breaks, you take the time, but the person who is there on time every day is going to rise faster than the ranks because right. that's just how life is. Like if you're putting in more work and more effort than other people, the boss is always going to come to you first because you're the guy that's you're the reliable guy, the stud. Right, know? exactly. And I, my the struggle that I always have with it, and we've talked about it before, is just my struggle. And it might be a military mindset thing, yeah. but I think I don't think it is. I mean, I feel that like a civilian would feel the same way. Yeah. Um, but as far as like, okay, so you have guys that are tired, so that's why they're late and stuff like that. Another yeah. devil's advocate moment. Um, starts affecting morale for the other guys. I'm just saying the guy that does show up on time every time, rather, I mean, he can't see his, he's like, oh, well, I'll rise, I'll rise faster than others. Yeah. I mean, that's not, doesn't really do anything for you when you're trying to wake up in the morning and go to the gym. No. So what motive, like what motivation does, do those people that are constantly on time, do you think that that slowly degrades away because they start waking up being like, well, I'm going to be the only one there. Cause for you and me, like, we we don't need it because we're yeah. always the first ones to the yeah, gym. Yeah. Yes, you know and, I mean? yes and no. Yes and no. You have to be clear about your communication. So again, it all goes back to being accountable and being clear with your communication, having candor right. and, and respect. And so like I agree. I that yes, it could bring morale down because everyone's like, that guy's late all the time. Okay, cool. Yeah, I've had conversations with that guy. And I hate that yeah, excuse too. No, no, I know. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. I hate that, that excuse. That guy's it all the time. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, I've had conversations with him. Well, you and, don't. Mm -hmm. And he's, you know, he's expressed it. He's having these issues. Are you okay with him having those issues? Yeah, I guess. Okay, then I need you to worry about you and understand that I see everything. And when it comes time for someone to fill the next spot, you know who's going to get it? You. Right. So just don't worry. Stay in your lane. Like, and, like, but, in the, like in the military. It's like, that, it's like well... That guy is always late. It's like, yeah, but you're our machine gunner. You yeah. want you want you want me to put him on it? He's like, no, I like being the machine gunner. Okay, it's like, then. then shut up. Then shut up. Exactly. And sometimes you know I mean? that's a conversation. Stay in your lane. Don't worry about what they're doing. Worry about what you're doing. Exactly. Don't worry about those other yeah. guys. They might have something yeah. that you would know nothing and, about. And but then also on top of that, also on top of that, it goes back to you can't set up standards that you don't hold because it's I say the same thing. Do you see me worrying about him being late? I'm here every day with you and I'm right. his boss. Right. And without communication, I feel like that's where it degrades because it's easy to be like, well, I'm always on time and those people aren't. And it's also easy as a boss to be like, well, don't worry about them. Yeah. But there can't be different standards for different people. But I do believe that situationally. Situationally, yeah, there isn't different standards. But like, you know, that's when you have the talk like, hey, you can't be late every day. And then they're good for a while. And then you have the talk again. And it's, hey, can't it's going to happen forever. It's going to happen with certain people. And that's like, Yes, that's problematic, but you have to teach your guys to like just stay in their lane, focus on what they're focused on, and our goal is to help him get on time. So like instead right. of instead of being like, oh, I'm, I it is unjust for me to not get whatever, to not get um doted on because I'm here on time every day and he's not. And it's like right. okay, well how about instead of that you take a leadership position and go talk to him and figure out why he's not here on time every day. Right. Yeah. Why don't you look at the man that you're leaving behind? And help him to figure that out. Okay. Instead of like being mad at him for being late, figure out how to help him. Yeah. That's what we should be doing. Right. So so there's always like there's always a workaround, in my opinion. Always a good way to there's always a, it. There's always a workaround. I just do feel like uh, and like you're saying, I do feel like a majority of the time the standards should be the same for everyone. Absolutely. But absolutely with you're never not gonna have given given yeah. sway for yeah. that. You and, always and have to get any any leader that is like Hey, oh, say, hey, man, I, I'm real tired. Like, we moved all this. I climbed all day. It's like, dude, be 30 break. minutes late. Take a break. Yeah. Be 30 minutes late. Yeah. I do not care at all. At all. Anyone and, that's like, nope, standard. That's military crap. Yeah. And, that's the stupid part of the military. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. And this isn't the military. People can quit whenever they want. And exactly. And that sucks. And all these entrepreneurs, <laughs> all these entrepreneurs, these fake entrepreneurs on Instagram who are like, I hold the standard. If they don't hold it, they're automatically fired. It's like, cool, man. You must have zero employees. 
Because, or four. Yeah, or four, <laughs> dude. Because like the way that we build business is not that easy. It is not that easy to find someone who can hold your standard every day, especially because you're the owner. Nobody cares about it as much as you do. Right. And so people that say that kind of crap just have never built an actual business. They have no idea how to do that stuff. Now, maybe when you have a hundred employee business, yes, there are certain standards and levels across your company. This is a standard that we always hold right. no matter what. And this is a fireable offense. But when you're small and you're building, you're still figuring those things out and figuring out which ones like if someone did something like um if someone did something like like s- s- called somebody a racial slur instantly gone for sure out, out that's that's a standard that we keep right so there are certain standards that are kept no matter what right and then certain ones that are like okay well we're still how building important, how important is this really to never break ever yeah and we need you like right. it's not something that we can just sacrifice because we're still small you need every one of those yeah guys. i every still one of those need guys every single studs. one of the guys so it's not like as easy as people being like oh yeah you just let them go cool how are you going to produce the 6k you need more or pay your bills if you let them go today right. you're not so don't sit here and tell me to my face that you just fire people who don't hold the standard because you would have no employees. Right. None. Yeah. And again, I wasn't talking shit. I'm just here to, uh, that's what yeah. I'm here for is yeah. to play, yeah. devil, play no, devil's good. advocate, ask the hard questions. No, it's good. Use, and it's obs- observations. Yeah, you know? I like it. We have good conversations. But anyways, we yeah. wanna, you want to knock out that other yeah, one? Yeah, we got time. We got time? We got time. All right, I was going to go to Hot Works and do hot yoga, but that sounds awful today. So I already worked out this morning. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so I was I was going through something. I don't know who I was talking to about this. might have been you. Probably not. Um, might have been Rich. Yeah. Who knows? Anyways, something called the E-Myth. You ever heard of it? Yeah, I know what E-Myth is. You do know what it is? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So when I read what it's about, I thought of you as far as, so there's this thing called the fatal assumption. Yeah. And I feel like it applied to you until you bought Trico. You and mean? you actually had learned yourself up on how to be kind of yeah. a business owner. You, I feel like the the fatal assumption, which is I'll read it. The fatal yeah. assu- the fatal assumption is if I understand the technical work of my of a business, then I understand that how to run that business. Correct. That is that is one far from the truth, and two exactly how you and I operated. Yes. When we were young, you knew how to do framing. You thought you could run a construction company. Nope. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, now maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But, but, I'm, but I'm saying, I feel, like, I feel like back in the day, that harshly applied to you. 100%. 100%. And, and if that's too much yeah. to say, then tell me. No, but. no, you're you're absolutely right. It, they call it, um, and in E-Myth, they call it uh, being a technician. And, uh, yeah, and technician being, and or being an entrepreneur. An owner. Yeah, or being an owner. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, there are lots of people who can never break the mindset of, I'm not no longer a technician, I'm an owner. Mm-hmm. And so they struggle with that one because they think that they're the only one capable of doing that work. And right. so they, I can't trust these guys to do it, otherwise it's not going to get done. or not going to get done as good as I am. Burbank. And, yeah, 100%. Yeah, plenty of people like that. And um, that's why they can't, like, break the mold and get into the business mindset. And it takes a lot of work, honestly. How many businesses did you see me like burn out on or fail before this like, i know the name of at least three <laughs> yeah so like it's not it was not as easy as people think like oh yeah you just go from it's exactly how you explained it how emith explains it yeah they think that because they can do a job well they know how to run a business doing that job and it's com- two different categories right you that's why there like, are ceos that come into big corporate companies when yeah. like uh you know these these what what's an example that movie the intern with robert de niro and yeah, Anne Hathaway. Uh-huh. It's like she's freaking out because she doesn't think anyone else can do it because, but she created this fashion, yeah, like clothing page for women. Yep, that doesn't mean that you can run that business yeah, once it outgrows you. Yeah, once it outgrows you, unless there are people that know how to do you it. You are on, in a growth mindset and are willing to learn how to be a CEO, and that is a very hard and have the time to do that. And your business will not suffer if you yeah. do that. Yes, you have to build these. And if that's you need thing. to stay as a technician, I feel like you can do that. I feel yeah. like if you need to stay a part, partly a technician, like yeah. like that, hire the CEO still. Yeah, and stay the and, way where you, you like, and it's still your business. Yeah, stay where you like. That's fine. You're, You're still, still the, the owner. Founder. Yeah, it's fine. Um, but yeah, there, there, you have to be willing to grow, and it, it means changing a lot. It means not doing things that you like. It means, it means learning new tasks that are difficult. So it's not like cool. You mastered the technician part of it. Now you have to master the business part of it. Then you have to master the CEO part of it. Then you have to master the accounting part of it. There's like all of these things that you have to learn and they're not always fun. Sometimes they suck. And so people get stuck in that mindset and then they are trying to live in both worlds and you can't. Yeah. I mean, when you're a small business, you have to, like we have to sometimes, like sometimes I'm still a technician and I still got to go out into the field and help guys. But I'm doing that now because I made mistakes last year as a CEO. Like I made mistakes that forced me into a position where now I have to do some technician work. Right. But that's not the end all be all. I just am it's recognizing. It's also not the end of the world. Yeah, it's, I just recognize that, like, okay, 
we jumped the gun on these things. Now I have to take a step back. And, but that's part of the growth process. Right. You can't do that unless you're willing to step away. And I did step away. I was not in the field last year, really. I mean, I flew the crane for filming reasons and stuff, but I, right. Matt was p- totally fine without me. Right. You know, so <clears throat> I, I, I love, I love that because it's very difficult to do. It's very hard. Um, especially because when you move from technician to CEO, you have to make hard calls as a technician. You can just, Oh yeah. It goes it's on back. someone else. Yeah. The standard can be, Oh yeah. That's, that's what right. I love. Yeah. That's why I'm not an entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The standard I'm is like, like, well, that sucks. <laughs> it's not my thing though. Yeah. The boss man, he wants us to be here freaking seven o'clock tomorrow. What about we come in at seven fifteen? Yeah. Know? Hilarious. I'm yeah. not going to be here at seven. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but as a CEO, that can't be the case. You have to hold yeah. that standard, especially it sucks. If you go from technician to owner and you still have all of the employees that you were with as a technician, because mm-hmm. now you're over them. And so you have to like earn their respect and it's difficult to do because yeah. they don't like listening to you. Right. Yeah. And it's, and that's harder more so for people that get promoted within, I feel like with the same people like, yeah. Uh, like, yeah, they knew that you when you were a technician, but I don't, I don't think you ever had to make that transition with at least not with the guys we have now. You never had to make that transition of like, being there every single day, being the foreman every single day, then transitioning to being the, this person. Like you were never a groundie and then became in charge of groundies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, well, no. And that's also because as we built this company, our turnover was high because we couldn't afford, yeah, you know, when, this back, guy. back when I bought it. Yeah. <laughs> our turnover was high. Like, you know, I mean, we had, how many employees did you and I go through before I got out of the, out of the climbing in the bucket? you know before and then it was like a year and a half yeah yeah and then it was like cool now i'm now i'm more in like a managerial position but i already during the time that i was learning to be a manager we lost most of the guys that i had worked with in the field so it was like different because i was still a manager but now i was managing people that didn't know me personally anymore how much grief did i go through with with certain people though oh yeah a lot i was a groundie yes i went to sales yes immediate problems with 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 the, with the crew <laughs> immediate problems with the crew yeah and then i was operations manager then we got half the crew half the crew that we have now and it's just like it was still just problems it's all still but i feel like i don't feel like that mindset ever leaves i mean you just have to be okay with it eventually because yeah. everyone's always going to be like oh well you're not even out here on the ground it's like no i'm not no i I'm was not. But i'm not that's I, not my job anymore sorry i progressed yeah is, is that the apology that sorry needs to for the growth that i'm contributing in my life yeah, yeah. it's not like if I, I would feel differently if i had never been a groundie but or I've a done climber that. <laughs> i carried the sticks it was not fun i did it i hated it now too. it's your turn to carry the i sticks. hated it too yeah and if you need help let me know but it's once also every once in a while the the good thing about being um the important thing about rising through the ranks is that you also still need to be humble enough that if you're needed back in those fields, you can go back. Exactly. And like you did that and I've done that. I mean, I today now in the field, I don't kick Matt out of the tree or out of the bucket. Like mm-hmm. I climbed, you know, I'm very experienced climbing a bucket and rigging and stuff, but you know what I do? I go on the ground and I carry sticks. I do the bottom of the totem pole job. That way all of the guys can keep their flow. Doing it's also it. much better. It's also a much better position on the ground as a foreman yeah i feel like i feel like foremen shouldn't be lead climbers they are in the beginning yeah i think that that works Mm -hmm. um i think and again you know i'm not anyone would say like you're not a freaking tree guy but i can see how it would be much easier to run a job site yes not from one perspective of the being up in the tree but being on the ground and having a skilled climber and you being a foreman on the ground controlling the flow of everything is what's going to make you successful and increase efficiency and increase increase this if you can get your ground guys to that point like that's why matt and i work really well as a team when we're in the field because he's good at climbing and i'm good at climbing and so i'm good at running the ground and he's good at running the ground and so we can work that really well as a system and that's that's really like what you said if you can get people to that foreman level where they know exactly how a job flows then they're really good at the ground and the climber can focus on what he's focused on and not be like, you know, on, on the scene or like, yo, move those sticks. Yo, do this. Yo, do that. He's just focused on the rigging, which is yeah. why he needs to be focused on. Right. And the goal is not to climb for 40 years. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, like it's lead climber is not the top of the totem pole. I don't think. No. I, in, in, in a perfect scenario. Yeah. 
In some scenarios, obviously. In a lot of scenarios, obviously, that's yeah. what it is for a long time. Well, climbing, time. and climbing is important. It, you need to go through climbing to get that pride. Like it's For very, sure. It's very important that they... And to be able to tell climbers what to do. To do, yeah, exactly. Because you could not have any experience climbing and then be on the ground and be like, oh, just send that rig. And it's like, you can't send that rig. It's way too big. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. that's what I've said. Like, I understand rigging and yeah. stuff like that. But I never did myself, so like I've never been on a job site. Like I wouldn't rig it that way. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. I, I did mostly. Pr- I did mostly yeah. prunes. Yeah, like when I climbed, that was my climbing experience. With all yeah. like prunes, me- to medium to like small to medium trees. Yeah, hundred percent. That's just what I did because yeah. we had the bucket for everything else. Yep. So it's just a, yeah, it's a different game, but uh, it's 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 important. Like as far as E Myth goes, um, it's important that when you move from technician to owner, you still are humble enough to. Go help the bottom guy because if you're not, then people know it and they just don't respect you. Absolutely. So that's why in the field, like I don't take anyone's power from them. Like I don't jump on the skid. That's Withers' thing. He operates a skid. I don't jump in the tree. That's Matt's arena. I'm not here to demote you guys. I'm here to help you, which means yeah. I will carry sticks because that sucks the most. Yeah. And whenever I went back down onto job sites, when like uh, whenever we needed to or whenever I needed to, I would rather stay there. That's where I'd rather be. Right yeah. there. Right there on the ground, helping with the crappiest part of it. Yep. Because that's what slows you down. That's, that's what slows it down. That's what this is the hardest part. It's what everyone hates. Matt, do. Matt's climbing rigging skills are to the point where it, like he, he's not slowing you down. No, he's not. He can and, get it nothing down. he's doing is going to slow you down. Yeah, he can get it on the ground just as fast. What's you need gonna, to be able to clean it up. What's going to happen is the only thing that Matt could do that could slow a job down is go too fast. Bury the ground, guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And, and, and I've never seen him do that. No. I don't, I don't think. I mean, no. he might have. No, he's, just, I've no. never seen him do it. No, we never do that unless we really have to. But. Right, or like you, you lay it, like you go to a job before anyone else gets there, and you just start putting stuff on the ground. Yeah, because you have to. Or, or it is what it is. Yeah, or we got to get a tree to the ground and come back later and, and chip it and everything. Then we just, you know, it is what it is, get it to the ground. And yeah, I was watching like some climbing arborist thing or something like that recently, and it was like, well, if got ground guys, you don't want to bury the ground guys and screw the ground guys. So if they're not there yet, make sure every single branch you cut or put down on the ground, you make it, you put them in a stack. But towards the chipper, and it's like every time. Yeah. How is that possible? Yeah, I can't, you want me <laughs> to? Not every. Okay. Not everything's a yeah. honey locust yeah. with yeah. Ha- an inch of yeah. limbs. You know. That's what, I mean? what you have to do. Um, that's what you do. Uh, if there's one guy in the tree and one guy on the ground, he stacks and then piles with the butts towards the chipper right. for when the chipper gets there. Right. But if you're climbing, there's no way you're gonna go up and down and up and down. Yeah, he literally was. It, he was on this tiny honey locust, and he was like, he was like, like watch, see. And I was like, yeah, like I could do that. Yeah, <laughs> one what little a, tiny what, stick at a time. <laughs> what, if, what if it's a fifty foot sycamore? Yeah, that ain't gonna work. Over a house. <laughs> yeah. Let me just piece this out one Ridiculous. one handful at a time, one handful of leaves. I just thought that was funny, yeah. but yeah, the emis stuff was good. I just, I just read that and I was like, oh, it's very applicable. I like it. Um, but that's, that's all. That's, that's all I got. That's all I got. Yeah. You want to call it a day? I think that was pretty good. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's all we got. Get out of our face.